always find improvisation it's a it's an amazing thing you know it's there's still a it's not like mo most people that don't know about this they think it's just some kind of magical thing you either have it or you don't it's like it's almost like if god is whispering to your ears which is ridiculous you know like i said like i told you before it's a language you know it's something that takes a long time to learn most classical musicians say no no i can't do that but they can't do that because they haven't done it because they tried two two minutes and they couldn't do it you know but it's something that you have to study years and that's just in one particular style you know you are kind of trying to create something unique in your own playing but you have to be 100% open to what the other players are giving you at the same time and the beautiful thing is that when it works especially in the context of a concert it really goes to places that you don't know and you're like so when it works well you're going wow what was that you know i had no ideas i and we could do that and that's an amazing moment you know talking to classical musicians very often they go oh my god i can't can't believe you just go on stage and you don't know what's gonna happen you know that's so stressful and I, I always go to them I can't believe you go on stage and you know every single note that you have to play that's so stressful you know <laughs> because you know that no matter what happens you have to play those notes right you know the beauty of not knowing what's gonna happen is that there is also much more allowance for mistake because everybody knows you're improvising things go wrong but you know you can fix it <laughs> it's good I find it hard to use the word composer because every time I think about a composer I have this image of someone sitting at the desk writing a symphony, you know, <laughs> which is I wouldn't be able to do what I've never done, you know. For me it means sitting at the piano, working on stuff and letting ideas flow, you know, to a certain extent. And then kind of working on ideas, you know, but uh, I don't think I've ever written a piece of music away from the piano. It's, uh, I mean, the piano is amazing for that because it's all there, you know, the music is all in front of you. You just have to figure out a little bit what you're doing, you know? I think it's amazing when you can hear a musician and you know right away who they are, whether you like it or not, but it's a very strong thing, you know? A lot of the musics that I'm involved in don't actually normally feature piano. So the challenge for me it has been more the other way around, just trying to bring all of these influences into my piano playing, you know, in the hope, obviously, that it creates something a little bit different. Um, I think there are some elements, you know, you're always trying to go back to what are you doing and how can you define it, you know, and how can you kind of pinpoint what are your elements, you know. I think there are some recognizable elements in my piano playing. I come from a classical background, you know pianistically speaking. Sound for me is very important, you know, which is something that I don't hear a lot in jazz musicians, you know. So I kind of try to go for a special way of, you know, not a special way, but a more classical way of generating a tone on the instrument, you know, which is, um, which is actually quite hard because as an instrument, the piano is very far removed from your body compared to loads of other instruments. You're hitting a key which kind of sets an incredible complex movement inside here with levers and all kinds of things. And then eventually a hammer comes up and hits a string. So it's so far removed from your body, uh, it's like typewriting almost, you know? So it is actually very hard to make the piano sing in that sense, I think, you know? And this is something that a lot of classical pianists concentrate on, you know? It's like the idea of trying to get a singing tone on the piano. Um, so I take that as a starting point. A lot of uh, jazz pianists would come from a much more percussive approach of the piano, you know, so concentrating more on rhythmical stuff and really kind of a, a clean, more uh, aggressive sound, you know, which the piano is very capable of. It's also a percussion instrument. It's the first thing that I listen to when I actually listen to a piano player or another instrumentalist as well. It's the first thing that strikes me is the sound, you know, it's a very kind of a uh, senses, you know, kind of feeling, you know what I mean? Um, and the other one is a kind of a balance between beauty and energy. This is what I always kind of try to look for, you know, whether it's my own music or someone else's music, you know. Again, the idea of beauty is very vague and, com and uh, complex, but the idea of, for instance, melodic beauty or harmonic beauty or something like that, which is uh, definitely a lot of people are not interested in nowadays, especially in jazz, you know. 
um, versus the idea of energy, which is also very vague and complex. Uh, energy can be groove stuff, you know, rhythm stuff, but it can also just be in power, you know, and that's more to do with performance and kind of energy. Do you know what I mean? I'm a trained jazz pianist, really. I mean, I went to conservatory to study jazz piano. Nowadays, <clears throat> what you see a lot is people studying these kind of Berkeley methods, uh, taking a very kind of vertical approach to uh, harmony and theory, you know, where it's very much rooted in this idea that your left hand is playing these kind of chords and your right hand is learning to play on top of them, you know? It's very much separated, you know, in that sense. And I hear it a lot in most kind of young students. My piano teacher came from an an earlier kind of idea of more rooted in bebop, you know, so much lower in the keyboard and much more rooted in horizontal movement, you know, so thinking more about voice leading, thinking more about individual voices moving, which bizarrely enough is actually more related to early music again, you know, so you're not thinking blocks of course, but you're thinking how everything moves into each other, you know. It was very, I feel I was very lucky because that gives you such a different kind of concept of harmony and the way you play and move your music. Very often when I play with this early music group, you know, some of the music is so beautiful and so touching that you actually, it's quite normal, you see people crying, you know, and it's such an intense thing, you know, you're on stage and you're going, something we are doing is making him cry, you know, it's a very strong thing, you know, and at the same time, the opposite, when you get the energy from the people or like, uh, that's something that you get, for instance, if you're playing type of music where people are dancing, for instance, you know, that's an amazing feeling as well, when you can feel that this is kind of connecting through them and making them want to move, you know? That's the opposite, that's more the energy side of it, you know? <laughs> 